Hey everyone, this is a Kundalini Chrism Yoga update live from the emotional waters of the mother's womb. Yeah, so I'm probably going to be a little cynical through this one because, I don't know, I've kind of washed up emotionally over the last week. So I don't know if anybody else is feeling these waters. We're in the sacrum now, right? So if you watch these videos, as a reminder, we go through the Ouroboros each year. The mother has a language, a mother tongue. It's been Maya these days. We'll get into that. But she moves through a kind of rhythm each year. From solstice to solstice, we go from the root to the crown in terms of the chakra system and what that feels like and what that might look like psychologically and in terms of your life journey or your hero or heroine's quest, right? So we've just come through the root and a lot of people came back into power by making a root shift, like a ground shift. The root is the earth. So imagine a serpent going through the desert and moves the sand. In the beginning, it was movement, right? The sand moves, it shifts the earth. So a lot of people, um, I moved home. A lot of people I know moved home, shifted jobs, moved in and out of a relationship. Um, I don't know, just took a step into a different ground of being that was calling them to their power, their rooted power. Like, okay, we need to root into a deeper sense of power here, things that are more fulfilling. Um, so that was kind of the last two months or so, two, three months. And now we've kind of been in the crossover between the root and the sacrum. And now I feel we're fully immersed in the sacrum, which is the emotional waters. So we come up the system. The sacrum is about, I don't know, three, four fingers below the navel. And it's the second chakra, and it's the it me it's svadista in Sanskrit, and it means the dwelling place of the self. So in most Eastern practices, anyone any practices worth their salt, whether it's martial arts like uh, Aikido or Tai Chi or Zazen meditation, sitting practices, awareness is put here, two fingers, two three four fingers below the navel, right? That's the hara. That's the sacral chakra, where we are right now. And awareness sits there, and then meditation feels like you're sitting on the waters. You're like a lotus on the waters, because that's the water, the dwelling place of your being, is your water center, your emotional center. So there's different uh, words used in different cultures, but prana, the life force energy, chi, or ki. And life force energy is often described as a subtle body of water. It's a river system that... Um, energetically sustains us and our physical body and our spiritual emotional and mental body right so that water system is sourced from here the dwelling place of being the sacrum the womb of your being woman or man and so the yogis say the whole life force energy is called prana and different chakra points have different uh, aspects of prana so this area the sacrum is responsible for vayana which is um, circulating life force so circulating the waters so circulating the waters of our being and we're mostly water right so if the waters if you can imagine if there's a log that's dropped across the river and one one avenue of self is not getting water there's stagnancy there it's not going to be good for the whole being um, physically psychologically mentally emotionally mm. the water must flow so it's interesting that the waters that flow through us to sustain us and our well-being and our balance is our comes and is sourced and circulates from our emotional center, our emotions, and our place of passion and creativity and sexual intimate or connection fulfillment. That all flows from here, the womb of your being. So we're kind of in a gestation now. We've moved up into this area and we're still inside the waters. It's more like the frog. The root chakra is like the snake and the sacral chakra, the svadista, is like a frog who has been visiting me a lot lately. The animals always bring the wisdom. And the frog, who took up, took up shop in my basin for a few days, represents fertility. It's very like the Empress card in Tarot. The fertility, the anxiousness of earth, the pleasure, the creative fulfillment, the sexual fulfillment, the passion fulfillment, the emotional well-being, the satiation of pleasure and life and the fullness of it. 
right? And the frog also um, is a rebirth creature. So, so the snake is a rebirth or a shedding, and the frog is also a rebirth because it moves from tadpole to frog. And unlike the butterfly, it doesn't go through its metamorphosis in a cocoon outside of water. It happens inside the water. So just like the frog, we're in the waters right now. We're being gestated in the womb of our mother's cosmic waters. We're in gestation, right? So it's confusing, right? I've had so many emotions this week coming from all kinds of directions. And then, you know, the emotions are big, right? So you can identify with the emotion and think you're going that way. Then I'm like, whoa, just hold on, Jane. Just it's a lot of emotion right now. Let's take a breather and just watch this play out. We're in full immersion right now. We're not in contemplation or reflection. So don't try and to try and make decisions now because you're in the you're in immersion. There's theory and practice. You're in practice right now. You're in immersion. So waters are immersive. It's felt. It's felt. It's first person felt. <laughs> right? You we all know what it is to feel emotions. It's like the thing that drives us in so many ways. Um so just feel them without trying to make conclusions based on them or make stories associated with them right now. Rather let them play through and be felt through and stay in awareness. That's why awareness is always um, resting over this area, the Hara. Because if we don't have awareness when it comes to the sacral throughout our lives, like every day of the year, but especially at the time of year when we move into the sacral chakra space, if you can't live in awareness, you might get caught in the waters of emotion. You might be like, you just get swept up into it, like totally immersed in it, first person, yes, in, in agreement with the emotions, which are egoic as well. Emotions are there to tell us things. Yes, the ego is there to tell us things like, mm, this person always makes me frustrated. Oh, that's because they undermine me. Okay, need to have a conversation or need to exit out of that space. So the emotions are there to guide us into the fullness of our sovereign power and being. But they can also be very deceptive, right? When you have a big emotion and you maybe can't, you don't have awareness or you haven't had insight into it yet, you might assign it to something that it doesn't belong to and get um, invested in a maya or a narrative. Maya is illusion. It's also an aspect of the mother. And it's the deceptive aspect. It's Satan. So Satan is just not as ig is ignorance. And emotions can often keep us in a state of ignorance, right? Um, especially when we've grown up in depleting emotional spaces, which a lot of people have. So this space really questions like, how are you in your emotional life? How are your close relationships? What is your kind of intimacy and emotional connection? Are you always giving? Are you always satiating and not receiving in return? Are you always taking and taking and not giving in reciprocity? Do you feel like you go along with things that you don't really want to do? Do you... Do you Please others in ways that you like, because I'm supposed to do this, but it's not your emotional fulfillment. It's not exactly what you want for yourself and need in that moment. So the emotional sacrum waters, um, codependence issues come up here, right? The giver, the martyr disease. Um, and knowing how to be totally autonomous in that space. So great balance and awareness is required in the sacral area because we can get swept up with desires. And again, I'm not going to say desires are wrong. Life is life, you know. Gilgamesh, yin yang, it all is as it is. But there is a way to master the self. And that's by being aware of desires and not agreeing with them until you know. And by the time it's moved, the desire is gone. So what was that anyways? What was that anyways? And just to be a little bit of a hardcore Zazen nun, I don't have any judgment on people who are in relationships and love relationships. But are you able to be alone? Genuinely. That's how you know if you've got an imbalance in your sacral. Can you sit alone? And that's actually your preference. Or do you have to reach to 
engage with somebody, interact with somebody, do something for somebody, invite somebody, um, compulsively take something like a, any kind of substance or fill it with something like TV, uh, substances, people. Do you have to fill the space of the self and your environment with stuff? Or can you sit and just sit in awareness, in dwelling, the dwelling place, the dwelling place of the self? It's very hard to sit and just be with yourself and with life when there's chaos in the emotional waters, when there's imbalance in the sacral. We don't feel comfortable to just sit. And I knew this when I went into uh, Father Amasami's ashram for some time. I, on day two of sitting meditation, we did a total of about two and a half, three hours a day spaced out well, over the time you stay there, over how many months. After two or three days, I wanted to jump out of my skin because I'd come from Kundalini and I was still in my spiritual way and practice in life. But I found it very hard to sit and be because my Kundalini was moving and it wanted, it was reaching. So the Satan, the sacral, the unaware sacral is Satan. The aware sacral is the potential for Christos. This is a time in our lives, and it's funny because it's um, Ramadan, which is, and it's Lent. These, these ceremonies and ritual times during Islam and Christian calendars are also based on this energy. They're fasting right now, right? For 40 days, because when you fast and you bring your attention to your presence and connection with God, you're staying in awareness, right? It's a very clever time. If I was going to pick any time to do Lent or Ramadan, it would be this time of year because of the sacral factor, because of these emotional waters and how deceptive they can be and how difficult it is to sit in them and feel it. Just feel it. Allow it to move through. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just be with it. Like I said, can you be alone? If you can't, I, I encourage you to try. And yes, difficulty will come up. You'll f feel this... Yeah, the writhing of the serpent in you. But can you sit like a warrior with it? Can you sit in love with it? Gentility and compassion for it, but the father of discipline. I am the mother to you and I love you and I hear you. And if we have to cry, if we have to have feelings because all these emotions are there and I can't reach for substances and people and things to fill it. I must sit with this emptiness, emptiness. I must sit on the lake, the waters, the primordial waters. How scary is that? Lying on the waters, the waters of eternity. There's nothing else there. Everything else is a story. Everything you're reaching for is an illusion. Everything we go to is Maya. It's elusive. The reality of, of everything is nothing, no thing, no thingness, emptiness, empty. Can we be with that emptiness and feel safe in that space? And feel so comfortable and cozy in that space that then we are very clear and know what is our emotional fulfillment. What is our passionate and sexual fulfillment? Because when there's chaos and pain still locked and trauma gets locked in that space, right? Trauma is in the root and the sacrum, the psoas muscle between that space, right? So old dysfunctions and family, old patterns sit there. So how can we truly know what it is we want until we know what it's like to not have these things? And to be comfortable with that, that to be comfortable with the true essence of being, which is no thing, me, satiated right here in the dwelling place of the self, like a lotus, softly ebbing on the waters of the mother. Then I know what I want. Yes, it's not saying that emotional things are wrong, but I'm clear and I'm in balance. I'm in awareness over my hara and I know what my emotions truly need. I'm not going to go too far. But I'm not going to withhold and yeah, maybe I do need connection and, and intimacy in this way. But from this kind of healthy person and this kind of situation that sees me and there's reciprocity and well-being and solid respect and uh, exchange. The importance of autonomy, total autonomy within intimacy. And how can we ever know total autonomy unless you know what it is to be alone and not writhe like a serpent when you sit in that space? And writhe until it stops writhing. And that becomes the sweet spot for you. Then you, of course, you're much more aware. Then you're not operating out of emotions. The river of emotion, just going with it. Or numbing out. Or just being overwhelmed by it. Then, then you're not stuck in the, the rushing waters of emotions. But you are the master of, of what your true needs are. 
So we're gestating right now and just, just let it be for a couple weeks.